The final show of the year is here on a mental health break. Vincent A. Lancey here. And what a year it has been, as we were just talking about behind the scenes. We're bringing back someone, and I love to do this, by the way, who's been on another podcast with me or who has already met my audience, because that means you, the listeners, get to meet them one more time. She came on that entrepreneur show for a podcast, a podcast bonus series. She has an awesome podcast about the hospitality field and so much more. But for today, we're going to dive into all things mental health on her journey. If you've been in the hospitality field, I'm sure you can understand there's quite a mental health toll at times, even in that field. So I'm sure we'll touch on that quite a bit. But Wendy, it's great to see you. Welcome back to a mental health break. Hi, Vicente. It's nice to see you again. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to see you. What time is it over in your side of the world? Um, It's actually 6 p.m. To be precise, four minutes past six. All right. Yeah, it's 12 p.m. here. And where are you streaming in from today for everyone who missed your first show? Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Nigeria. Well, thank you for, again, coming back, giving us some time for another show this podcast, of course, is a bit different. You help people in a different way. When was the first time in your life that you started realizing you may need to pay attention to your mental health? It's not just your physical health. Hmm, that's a very good question. Okay, so I would say sometime when I was actually working with um someone, I, I had an employer at the time who really didn't care about anything else. It's just about the job. I mean, just get it done. The funny thing is, uh, two nights ago, I was still having this conversation with my younger sister because she was having the same experience where she's currently working. So I said to her that, you know, some years ago, I actually had same experiences with some employers. Actually, it wasn't just one employer so i'm going to start with the first one uh i left high school at 16 and yeah i, I haven't gained admission to the tertiary institution yet and i just didn't want to you know just stay at home and not do anything so i decided to go you know get some work so a friend of mine told me she works at a complex and there's somebody, this is a store owner that's actually in need of a sales rep. Uh, if I wouldn't mind the job, I'm like, okay, why not? So I went for the interview. That was my very first interview. I mean, looking for a job, seeking employment was quite different. It was different from debating in school and everything. I didn't know what to expect from an employer and all. I was quite young. So upon getting there, when she saw me, you know, I'm actually petite. Now you can you can say that I've added um some little stature and all. Then I was actually slimmer than I was. And she looked at me and asked if I could do the job. I am I the one applying? I was like, I actually am not here with anybody. So why would she ask me such question? And she asked again, do you know the kind of job you're applying for? I said, yes. She said, okay, do you think you can actually do this job? I said, yes. She said, what makes you think? Because the way I see you, I don't see you as somebody who can actually go on this job. I don't think you can handle the pressure of this job. But I just looked at her. I've been very lucky to, I've been trained by um, actually good uh, teachers, educators growing up. So it's actually helped my confidence, regardless of the person that I am speaking with or speaking to, I'm able to stand my ground. So I wasn't really intimidated by what she was saying, although I was a bit nervous, to be sincere. So I said, yeah, she said, okay, you see, when you come here in the morning, you have to arrive very early before 8 a.m. because our customers are filled here by 8 a.m. You have to be in this place. And it actually has um some sort of burglary. So when you get into the into the office, 
there's a common space, a lobby where everybody stays. And then we go into our own office. And <laughs> it looks more like a prison, kind of. And then you have to go there because um, we deal with a lot of cash every day. So I felt she thought the only way she could actually uh, handle and protect our money was to put us in that kind of space. So you have to go there. So when the customers are actually speaking to you, you're interacting with the customers, the only way you guys actually see each other is they only get to see your face. It's not like going to the prison either. You want to give a call, like, yeah. hey, are you good? And something like that. Yeah, so I'm like, okay. Right. The first day, my um colleague was actually very good. He was a very kind and easygoing person, a guy. So it was easy on me. Like, okay, this is how you do it. This is what you do. But the thing was that um, at first, you know, with the kind of reception I had from, from my employer then, and for the fact that she doubted me, and everything, everything went well. Everything was just like uh, when you get into an ocean and you struggle to, you know, to swim. I struggled at first. I was like okay then because everybody kept coming in at the same time and i have to be very careful with my calculations with everything and at the close of my shift and she checks and balances oh yeah, yeah. and she she speaks in a very ash tone i'm like wow can i actually continue this kind of job can i actually work in this kind of environment that was when I, you know, I got conscious about my mental health, probably like, this is actually not doing well. Yeah, I want to gain experience working out there. I want to make some money for myself. But yeah, what's that? It's actually to the de detriment of my mental health. So I, I told my parents, there was actually a, an incident that I actually got home and I spoke to my dad. My dad was like, you're not going back there again. That's enough. I said, I'm like, she's literally um insinuating like I'm a thief. Even after all records, everything has shown that everything is intact. But she's just trying to, that was you know, like, oh, sugar, there are some humans. And, you know, you can't do this to my mental health all in the name of making money. So that was I, when I was out. I, I love I, how I, you I put went. that there. Yeah. Don't jeopardize That's your it. mental health. To, yeah. Uh, so that that led you ultimately to here today, doing your own thing, happy in life. Exactly. Tell us more about what you do now to catch everybody up on who you are. Okay. So um, I've actually been doing a lot. I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I studied that in school, um, entrepreneurship and business management for my degree. And before then, I've actually loved, I don't like being idle. I like getting into activities. I love trading, doing something, even when I, while I was in school. So after I did my first degree, which was um, public administration, I decided, okay, what else? Although going for entrepreneurship and business uh, management wasn't my first choice, of course. But I'm like, okay. I've worked in different places. I've been put in roles of management, uh, business management and administration and oh, well, why not actually go for this course? Right. And yeah, I found myself doing it. So I've actually been uh, doing different kind of businesses. Hospitality is my thing. I love it. I love service. I love, you know, I enjoy service. I enjoy right. serving people. I enjoy also sharing my knowledge, um, educating other others um, about the, the hospitality industry. I operate a cleaning business as part of what I do. And I trade generally. So I can say that, yeah. Well, that's I guess I want to I want to ask you now here, Wendy, you were in that toxic situation for your mental health. You found a way to move forward from it. But as entrepreneurs, there are also mental health challenges that come with our lifestyle. What are maybe a mental health tip or two you can offer to other people who are working on their own to 
keep their mental health afloat? Okay, so as an entrepreneur, um, there are a lot of challenges and there are a lot of things you're going to face out there because there are millions of people. You get to meet different people every day in your line of business, especially when you're de doing businesses that you have to meet people on a face-to-face, -face, you have to interact on a face-to-face -face basis or on the call. When you do emails sometimes, sometimes for some people, the words do not have effect because it's being typed. But when you uh, have a face-to-face -face conversation, you know, the tone of the, uh, the, the person speaking, body language, everything. I mean, I'm someone that actually picks on all of that. So sometimes you get to meet um, some potential customers, not even customers. And the way they address you, some people think if I'm giving you my money, I should be able to speak to you in a kind of way that I like. And some people tend to measure you by your looks, like by your height, by your outfit, or by the car that you drive. Do you, are you even mobile? All of those things actually put entrepreneurs in a space where they sometimes think they are not enough or their efforts do not count. How well can they please? And uh, people tend to miss the fact that you have to balance everything. You right. can never satisfy everybody, even in the hospitality business. I have learned that. Even, uh, let's say, for example, recently you're my, um, you're my guest. I made a mistake with your reservation, and I actually gave you an upgrade, free upgrade, let's say, to the presidential suite and free breakfast, till the end of your uh you know your stay yep but then i see you online putting out a review writing a bad review about my business mm. and i am alarmed like wow i did this i give this to this person i try to please this person yep. that is one part of the challenges about being an entrepreneur you know, because well, even when you give customers coupons, you give them loyalty rewards, you try to do this and that, you know, yeah. to get things balanced. There's some people are never satisfied. And I would say that mm -hmm. to protect your mental health as an entrepreneur, yeah. you should actually not beat yourself. Just allow, just allow things sometimes. Because um, when things are beyond your control, yeah. there's nothing you can do about it, even if you give it your best. I, and I like that way to end the show on such a great note. One more time, where can we find um, you online, but also for people to tune into your podcast if hospitality was what they're into? Okay, so um, my podcast is actually on different uh, platforms, digital platforms, on Spotify, on um, on Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Overcast. I mean, numerous digital platforms, you can always find my podcast edges with wendy yeah so if you go on google podcast or any just type in edges with wendy you find me i love it well thank you so much for coming on a second show and being the last episode of 2023 everyone be sure to check her out on social media and us as well we are at that entrepreneur show we are at a mental health break podcast on instagram we are at a mental health break on all the other platforms as we got locked out on Instagram and they don't have a phone number, so I'll never get back in there. But a Mental Health Great Podcast. Check me out at Vincent A. Lancey. Be sure to follow me on YouTube as we started producing more content there. And with that, we are signing off for the final time this year. Wendy, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vincent. It's nice to always do this with you. Absolutely. Absolutely.